Hello, hello, great 12s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, U Abudiwa Sos Ukobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at these questions that we have here. Okay, so we have question five. It says uh, three experiments A, B, and C are carried out to investigate some of the factors that affect the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. The balanced equation for the reaction is as follows. And then identical samples of hydrogen peroxide are used in each experiment, right? So that means they're using the same mass, right? Then uh, the condition used in each experiment are summarized in the table below. So in experiment A, was done at a temperature of 25 degrees without a catalyst. Experiment B was done at a temperature again of 25 degrees, but this time with a catalyst. And then experiment C was done at a temperature of 35 degrees and without the catalyst. Then 5.1 says in which experiment A or B is the reaction rate higher? Use the collision theory. So now we can see that between A and B, the temperature uh, remains constant. It's a control variable. But then uh, the factor that they're actually investigating here is the presence or the absence of a catalyst, right? So um, we do know, obviously, that uh, with a catalyst, the rate of reaction will have to increase because the catalyst lowers the activation energy. So which one will have a higher reaction rate? Obviously, it has to be B, right? And then explaining it according to the collusion theory, we say adding a catalyst, adding a catalyst provides an alternative pathway, an alternative pathway of lower activation NH. And then that means more particles, so more particles will have a energy greater than the activation NH greater than the activation energy. So what does that mean? If more particles have energy greater than the activation energy, that means more particles now have sufficient energy to collide, right? So that means uh, leading to more effective collisions per unit time. So leading to more effective collisions per unit time effective collisions per unit time. And then we can have our famous conclusion, thus increasing the rate of reaction, which we have already uh, in indicated that B will obviously have a higher reaction rate, then thus increasing the rate of reaction. The rate of reaction. And that's how we go about it. So adding a catalyst provides an alternative pathway of lower activation energy. That means more particles will have, e will have energy greater than the activation energy and then leading to more effective collisions per unit time and thus increasing the rate of reaction. Right. Then uh, let's proceed. We have um, 5.2, it says the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curves X and Y for two of the above experiments are shown below. Then they say identify the curve X or Y that represents experiment C. So experiment C, we can see that this one, what they did is they increased the temperature. Now between X and Y, which one represents the effect of an increase in temperature? In temperature, we obviously know that uh, the effect of an increase in temperature causes the graph to skew 
uh, more to the right so we can see that the graph here is pushing more to the right so that means y has to represent uh, the effect of an increase in temperature then okay now 5.3 says the volume of oxygen gas o2 produced in experiment b during the first 3.6 seconds is collected in a syringe as shown below then 5.3.1 says write down the volume of uh, o2 oxygen gas collected in the syringe now whenever they say write down that means it's something that you can see from whatever that they've given you there so we are given a syringe and then we can see that the syringe has been put all the way up until this mark here which should indicate the volume of the oxygen gas remember the oxygen is right here right so the oxygen that has been collected fills the space here but then how are we going to find the value in here it's a matter of having to find out what interval did they use here uh, to mark up our syringe so if we have 160 here 320 we can uh, essentially get the interval here by saying they skipped two blocks here so we're gonna say 160 divided by two which will give us 80 so that means each block here represents a distance of 80 or a volume of 80 centimeter cube so if it's 80 here 160 then uh we're just gonna be adding 80 80 so that means for here we have 480 plus 80 which for 5.3.1 we now understand that we should have 560 centimeter cube right so that becomes the volume thereof then uh let's now proceed we have 5.3.2 it says the balanced equation for the reaction is as follows here then calculate the mass of water h2o that was produced during the first 3.5 3.6 seconds take the molar gas volume uh, to be 24,000 centimeter cube a mole at 25 degrees Celsius. So now we have seen them use this a couple of times from all the questions that we've tackled before. Then uh, we know the drill. What we are supposed to do if we want to calculate a uh, the mass of this one here, we are given the mass of the oxygen gas. So step number one is obviously having to calculate the number of moles. So step number one, calculate number of moles but then how are we going to calculate the number of moles having been given the information of the oxygen gas oxygen gas obviously will have to be produced at stp um, since these experiments are done at room temperature then uh, they've even mentioned here 25 degrees celsius so we first start by saying n is equals to v over vm remember we did uh, find our volume here to be 560 so since uh, this one is in centimeter cube and then the vm is also in centimeter cube we can just substitute in here so the centimeter cube and centimeter cube will cancel out so that means we have five to 560 divided by twenty four thousand, which uh, will have to give us give us 0 0.023 mole right and then step number two is obviously use coefficient ratios. So if we use the coefficient ratios, remember what are we looking for? We are looking for H2O. So to use the coefficient ratios, that will have to be uh, the ratio of the oxygen gas to the ratio of the uh, H2O water. And then the ratio is one is to two, as we can see the coefficient of water, there is two. And then uh, we have this one here, 0 0.023. Remember, do not be carried away here. We are calculating, we were calculating the number of moles of oxygen gas. And then we do not have the number of moles of uh, the water, which is why we are doing the coefficient ratios. And then all we have to do to calculate the number of moles of H2O, we just have to cross multiply the 0 0.23 with two. And then we find that the number of moles there will now be equals to. So if we punch all that into our calculator, that's a 0 0.046 mole, right? And then now that we have that, we head to step number three which is to calculate for the required field. So calculate for the required value, right? 
So what is the required value? What are we looking for? We are looking for the mass. So that means the formula that we use is N is equals to small m over big M, whereby our number of mole is 0 0.046. And then here we have M. And then what is the molar mass for water? We have hydrogen being one, and then one plus one is two, and then 16 oxygen, so that's 18. So our mass, if we cross multiply 18 with that, that's going to give us a 0 0.83 gram rounded off obviously to two decimal places and then we have 0 0.83 gram and then that's uh, the mass of the water there right then just like that we have calculated using our three steps uh, for the stoichiometric calculations so let's proceed Now, um, we are given the graph below, which is not drawn to scale, is obtained for the mass of oxygen gas produced over a period of time in experiment A. So in experiment A, remember experiment A is the one that was uh, done at 25 degrees Celsius without a catalyst, right? And then we are told that we are given a the the mass of oxygen over time so remember that oxygen is a product so hence we can see that we have um, an increase in concentration here as the reaction proceeds right so understand uh, the information that we are given there now 5.4.1 says write down the rate of production of oxygen gas for the interval 30 seconds to 36 seconds now we can see that our graph here is just horizontal so that means there the rate of reaction is just zero so the rate of production is zero because at that moment we say that the reaction has came to completion so there will there will be no more uh, oxygen that is produced so for 5.4.1 we are supposed to say zero grams per second right so that's the rate or you can just say zero right so zero grams per second that's the rate of production so what does it mean no um no oxygen is a uh, feather produced at that point because the reaction has came to completion then will the rate of the reaction in the interval three seconds to nine seconds so three seconds to nine seconds be greater than smaller than or equal to the rate of production between nine seconds to 20 seconds now from nine to 20 seconds if you can check here uh, the mass that was produced between 9 to 20 seconds which in between we can see that that's 11 seconds but then the difference in mass it's only two grams right so in a space of uh, 11 seconds only two grams of the oxygen was produced but then look here between three to nine seconds that's six seconds the same rate the same mass of oxygen was produced two gram right but then uh, how do we compare which one has a higher reaction rate? Remember, reaction rate, we are speaking about how slow or fast the reaction is. So if it is faster, we say the reaction rate is greater. And then if it's slow, we say the reaction rate is uh, smaller. Right. Now, if you can check between three to nine seconds, that means within a short period of time, we were able to produce this much of uh, the, the oxygen gas. But then here, within a longer period of time we were just able to only produce two gram right so obviously this means that the rate of reaction between three to nine seconds is much more greater than the rate of reaction between nine to 20 seconds and even if you can look at it in terms of your gradient you can see that here the graph is kind of more steep than uh, between 9 to 20 seconds so here you can see it becoming a little bit smooth here but then here it is much more steep but i suppose to say greater than right greater than okay so now we have 5.4.3 it says the average rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is 2.1 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 mole per second right then they say calculate the value of time t on the graph so we can see that we are being told of the rate of decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and then which we do understand average rate of decomposition this is speaking of our reaction rate 
and then now having to go back to our balanced equation here because we will obviously need our balanced equation to solve this remember this we are now looking at stoichiometry so let's try to uh, write it here so that we are able to solve this so we have two hydrogen peroxide and then we have two water molecules plus O2, right? Then looking at this graph, we can see that we do have the mass of the oxygen at time t. And then we can see that the mass of that oxygen at time t is 0 0.9, right? So 0 0.9. Now that means we can say, let's calculate the number of moles of uh, that oxygen. So by saying step number one, calculate number of moles calculate number of moles so we can have n is equals to m over big m which uh, we do understand this will give us our mass is 0 0.9 and then what is our molar mass for oxygen gas uh, oxygen gas remember that's o2 right it's not just o that's o2 then that is uh, 16 and 16 which is 32 then 0 0.9 divided by 32 will give us 0 0.028 mole, right? So if we just round off to three decimal places, and then step number two, we do understand that now we have to use the coefficient ratio. So use coefficient ratios. And then what are we looking for now? Why are we using coefficient ratios? Because we are trying to get to hydrogen peroxide remember the average rate of decomposition that we are given is not of the oxygen gas but of the uh, hydrogen peroxide so if we compare the ratio of oxygen gas to hydrogen peroxide then we find that this is what this is one is two two so if we have 0 0.028 what is uh, the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide would have to be twice this. So 2 multiplied by that, we find that the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide is equals to 0 0.056 mole, right? Now, step number three, uh, we obviously know that we now have to calculate for the required value, which the required value in our case is time t, right? So since we are given that, uh, so step number three, Calculate for the required value. For required value. So once you know the steps, guys, your stoichiometry is now fine. Then uh, we know that we have to say rate of reaction is the change in the number of moles over the change in time. Why changing the number of moles? We can see it from the SI unit because this rate of reaction we are given in mole per second. So being given in mole per second tells you that we had our change in the number of moles and then we had our delta time in seconds, right? Now to calculate that, we'll say, what is our reaction rate? That was 2.1 times 10 to the exponent of, uh, what's this? To the exponent of negative three right and then our change in the number of moles we have calculated it to be 0 0.056 and then over our delta t which we do understand to find our delta t now we have to say 0 0.056 divided by this 2.1 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 and then we find our delta time uh, in seconds as uh, 26 point six seven seconds right then that's how you were just supposed to calculate the value of t on the graph using your stoichiometric rules right and then uh, with all that being said guys please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson and then you found it helpful and if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for please uh, hit that subscribe button but most importantly Please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.